Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to continue working on this engine stand, get this head mounted in here. I have the strong suspicion we're going to make this a three-part video because this has taken a while to get done. Let's get to it. Now it's time to start working on the head for this engine stand. This is the front hub from, I think, an Impala, something like that. At any rate, it was the cheapest one that I could find, so it's the one I got. And hey, look, we can even put ABS on our engine stand. So this is going to go at the top. This will allow us to rotate the motor around. Should be able to hold the weight of a motor, no problem. Be nice if it didn't have this reluctor, if it was just a nice round uh, surface here. But we'll deal with what uh, we got. This is going to allow that motor to turn nice and smooth and easy. If you've ever worked with an engine on a stand before, you know they're never balanced and they want to flip over or turn to some direction where the heavy side is down. So we need to be able to prevent that. I've got here a brake from a go-kart that is from a project that, if you uh, recall, I blew up a small engine. It was going to be the motor for us for that go-kart. Since I blew up the motor, I don't really need it anymore. So, this is a piece that was left over from that project. Effectively, this drum will go on the back side here. Somehow, there will be some shaft, and this is going to attach to it, facing one direction or the other. And then this brake band goes on here, and then I'll have some sort of a screw that allows you to tighten this down, and that tightens down on this. So it can rotate here, and you tighten it down, and then it doesn't rotate. So that's the plan. I don't know exactly how that's going to work yet. This is going to be totally design build at this point. One thing that I wish I had was a way to make a, you know, a spline shaft. If I had the CV axle, or at least the outer stub shaft, that would be great. Because so I could run this through and have it come through, you know, the back side of the, the engine hoist, or not hoist, but the engine stand, which is going to be here, and the spline shaft could come through. I don't have this spline shaft, and I really don't feel like buying an entire CV axle just so I can cut it up and get that. So I'll probably have something that I have turned that fits just inside of this. And then right now, I'm thinking maybe I'll notch this housing here, because I don't really want to weld in on it. don't want to damage the bearings in there. So maybe if I notch this and then I can have some sort of a square plate that goes across. And then the shaft that comes out here, then we'll have a handle on it or, I don't know, maybe put a square hole in it for a breaker bar. Something along those lines. Again, I really don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. It's going to be as I come across it. First order of business is to get this mounted on that stand. So we're going to start that fabrication once I have that. Then we'll worry about doing the shaft and the brake and all of that kind of stuff. First thing first, I'm going to make a template here for this circle and the holes on that so I can transfer it onto the stand. And that gives us the bolt positions as well. Now to just transfer this over onto that engine stand. I'm going to punch these out with a gasket punch. That should give me a nice clean hole. You can see that the holes here and here are outside of this, so I'm going to have to do something to build that up to drill through. Maybe just put in an angle iron or something. The real pain is, is it's right on the edge, so I've got to notch all the way through here. But first things first, we'll get it marked out. we got to cut this hole and then that hole. Not going to lie, this is probably the best use of the plasma cutter that I can think of. 
Unfortunately, it's buried behind a car and it's going to be hard to get to. Well, that's ugly, but it should be close. So I've been overthinking these. I've been trying to figure out how to have a nice round hole that goes all the way through and a half hole here and here because I'm going to have a bolt that comes in from the back and it threads into the flange. These flanges are threaded, but I don't need it to be a perfect hole. And in fact, right here, it's pretty weak. If I squeeze down on it, it's going to crush. So what I'm going to do is take some of this rectangle tube and cut it so that it goes across there. It'll just be a U because it's too big to go this way. But it'll just be U-shaped. That way I can weld it across here and here and it'll give a channel big enough for the bolt to go through. And when you tighten down the bolt, it's trying to crush this tube. It's going to give really solid resistance. It'll be very rigid. And then I can probably do something very similar here. Put one here and one here. Basically just providing a channel for the bolt to go through and then something that it can pull against. Once I do that, I think it's going to be really rigid. Then I just have to do that hole here for the shaft that goes through and figure out how that's going to work. But one thing at a time. We'll solve this problem first, then we'll worry about the shaft and the brake. Forgot to hit record, but you get the idea here. Now that I have it boxed out for this bolt, I just need to do the same thing on these two sides. You can see the bolt comes through there. Need to take a little bit more off there. And over here, we're good. Top's good. That one's good. That one's good. When I go to put the wheels on these, it's going to be easy because I can just put a bolt up through here and put a nylock nut on. I can reach all four of those pretty easily through this gap. Not so fortunate here where we actually bolt it to the legs. I'm going to have to run a bolt all the way through, which means I need to mark it and drill a hole all the way through. I'm going to have to do the same there. So I'll mark those and then drill all the way through. Make sure that I center the legs first. And here we go. We now have a really good start on the most over-engineered engine stand I've ever seen. I still have to deal with a shaft to come through here that allows us to turn it and the brake to hold it in place. We'll do this brake and that shaft as a part three. That's it. Thanks for watching.